Uh, let's talk markets now. Uh, let's focus on, on, on gold prices. You know, it's the year of the dragon, Baba. The dragon baby rush, they're saying, could drive gold prices to new highs if the nation, China, decided to invest in this direction. This is according to one broker. Quote, government officials are hoping the influence of the year of the dragon, which is re revered for its power, strength, good luck, and wisdom, wisdom, will encourage couples to raise the birth rate. The last year of the dragon in China saw 38% rise in new births. Okay, more than the rise in birth rates, I'm curious to know your thoughts on this current gold market. I mean, as we're speaking right now, getting some uh, pressure from the stronger U.S. dollar um, and, and U.S. Treasury yields. Your take on gold? Well, gold and could we see... I'm sorry. Please. No, no. Your take on gold and whether we could see a renewed, renewed, renewed interest in China buying. Well, I don't know if it'll be China. You know, China's in a lot of trouble. You know, nobody talks about the problems that China has there. And I don't know if they have the, the, the you know, they're, they're once again, as they let the people develop a middle class, they're now trying to destroy it again. Uh, but I, again, gold itself, I think, is going higher. Now, again, it's going to vacillate. We've been stuck between 2000 and 2100 for a couple of months after making a new high. And I think that we'll make all time new highs again this year. And I wouldn't be surprised to see gold get to 22 or 23 or 2400. I mean, again, I don't know when it'll be, but I think that gold is going to go higher. I think silver is going to go higher. Listen, I think the metals are a place to be. And I think that every portfolio should have some representation of metals and physical metals, not paper, but physical. Because, again, paper is, I don't think there's enough gold in the world to cover the amount of paper that's been sold. But I do think you should be buy, buy our physical metals and have them because I do think they're going higher. I mean, listen, we're going to have markets that are going to go up and down. And, again, it's a good asset class to own. And remember, you may sometime need it as a currency again, because with what's going on with these currencies and these these, these phony central banks around the globe and the, the fiat currency, which is absolutely wor a worthless system, trying to benchmark commodities against, as dollars against each other, it, it's a scam. I mean, they can do whatever they want with them. They're, all they're doing is giving the, the ability to de devalue your currency and your dollars. What do you say to folks? Because obviously I know you're a believer in gold, who, who say, you know, given all the geopolitical tensions, why, and of course, I know there's the argument, look, gold's doing what it should, and it's at all-time highs, but people want to see $2,500 gold. People want to say, see $3,000 an ounce gold here, Bubba. Well, I, I want to see Harrison Bucker win the MVP for 300 to 1 in the Super Bowl. But again, <laughs> it doesn't happen until the markets are ready to buy it. Remember, the, the gold markets, all markets are developed by buyers and sellers or price discovery, right? So until the buyers want to step up, I mean, the sellers can't the sellers can't just manipulate it lower unless they're willing to commit too much capital, which eventually then they'll get stuck. At the end of the day, the gold market's going to go up when the buyers decide to become more aggressive. And right now, they've been very passive. We've been seeing sideways action, and you're seeing the strong hands become buyers, push it up to a level of resistance. The strong hands come in, become sellers, and push it back down to support. And that's just the, the churning of any, any market. It'll break out eventually and most likely to break to the upside. Let me talk uh, to you a second here about um, uh, the U.S. dollar, which you brought up, because I'm sure you caught, if not all, but parts of the interview between Vladimir Putin and Tucker Carlson, where Putin warned the Bi that the Biden administration is killing, he said, the dollar with its own hands by turning the currency into a weapon of foreign policy. Thoughts on that interview and that specific statement about the weaponization of the dollar? Well, I mean... Listen, I, I think that this administration is trying to have a, a, a destruction everywhere, okay? They had a perfect ability to put a, the Ukraine-Russia conflict to rest and eliminate all these problems. They're trying to destroy the country the way we know it. They're trying to turn it into a Marxist or a communist country. So everything they do is not to the benefit of the citizens here, but to the detriment. And of course, again, the stronger dollar, look, the dollar trades like anything else. And, and whether they're weaponizing or not, again, it still trades against the other currencies. And I think that the dollar is higher. And, and why do we want to, why don't we want a stronger dollar? I mean, because it makes gold go down or because it makes the commodities go down. Look, if you want your commodity, you want to sell commodities at a, at, a, at a price, you get a higher dollar, sell the commodities for a cheaper price if you really believe that's the case. I don't believe in that case. I think that the, if they had an actual, if the dollar had an actual backing like gold, like it used to have, then we would know what a real value was instead of the artificial value that is put in by the Federal Reserve and the central banks around the globe. Todd Baba Horowitz, we started talking uh, the Super Bowl. So let's just end with this fun fact, because I know you 
are a uh, real uh, Taylor Swift fan, <laughs> that Front Office Sports first reported the pop star generated more than $330 million for the NFL and the Chiefs. This is according to Apex Marketing Group. This, and she only attended 12 games leading up to the Super Bowl. And according to a recent survey by Lending Tree, she's getting the younger kids, uh, mostly young girls, interested in the NFL. She's making an influence, making them care about uh, football. Your thoughts, as I know a diehard NFL fan, on uh, the Swift effect? I think there's nothing better than Taylor Swift being so heavily involved in the, in, in the NFL. She is phenomenal. I mean, I don't, I don't see her. I'm wow. a, a dramatic fan, but she is phenomenal. She does. She when she does a concert, she does a concert for three hours. Everybody loves her. Okay, she's the most popular icon in the world. Why wouldn't you want her representing your product and out there and bringing in yeah. the younger generation? Because again, look with with all the gambling that's going on and all the apps that are going on, the legalization now in New York City. Okay. They're bringing in more people. And believe me, the reason that football is the number one sport to begin with is because of the gambling, not because of the game. And now you're bringing in a whole new generation of people that love Taylor Swift and they're becoming interested in the NFL. How can you not like what she's doing? And anybody who says different is an idiot. And they got to shake it off. <laughs> I mean, if you're a Swifty fan, you know my reference. But I guess that's why there's so many, you know, conspiracy theories as, you know, why did Taylor Swift become involved? 